in this video we are going to discuss about architecture of 8086 microprocessor or this can also be called as or block diagram of 8086 microprocessor okay so this is nothing but architecture of 8086 microprocessor or we can call this as block diagram of 8086 microprocessor here 8086 microprocessor is a 16 bit processor so 16 bit processor means 8086 microprocessor performs operations on 16 bit data in one clock cycle so here the data bus size is 16 bits whereas size of the address bus is 20 bits so 8086 microprocessor has 16 bit data bus and 20 bit address bus so the size of the physical address is 20 bits okay uh, now let us see this diagram so this entire diagram so this entire diagram so the da the, the this uh, dashes the diagram which is placed in this dashes is called as what architecture of the 8086 microprocessor here this architecture is mainly divided into two parts the first part is called as BIU the second part is called as EU BIU means bus interface unit so BIU stands for bus interface unit bus interface unit whereas what is the second part the second part is eu eu stands for execution unit execution unit so here this part this part is called as biu okay this part is called as biu so bus interface unit mainly contains segment resistors these resistors are called as segment resistors and this is nothing but adder circuit and uh, instruction queue so uh, bus e bus interface unit mainly contains uh, three things what is the first one segmentation resistor so all these resistors are called as segmentation resistors and this is called as adder circuit and this uh, diagram is nothing but instruction queue whereas this part this down part is called as execution unit execution unit mainly contains control system and a bus arithmetic logic unit operands flags these resistors are called as general purpose resistors these resistors are called as offset resistors so execution unit mainly contains these things so general purpose resistors offset resistors arithmetic logic unit operands flags control system so this is nothing but uh, what does an execution unit will contain and then let's see the advantage of the bus interface unit bus interface unit mainly fetches an instruction from the memory so here outside the uh, processor we have memory so memory is not the part of the processor so on top of the processor we have memory so processor interacts with the memory so here bus interface unit fetches your instruction from the memory bus interface unit reads your instruction from the memory and then stores the corresponding instruction in instruction queue with the help of the bus we know what is a bus bus contains a set of lines through which the information is passed so bus interface unit fetches an instruction from the memory and stores the corresponding instruction in instruction queue here the size of the instruction queue is 6 bytes 6 bytes so totally instruction queue can stores 6 bytes of instructions there may be of same instructions or the instructions may be from different instructions but here totally we can store 6 instructions in the instruction queue here this is nothing but queue we know that a queue works on FIFO policy first in first out policy first insertion first out policy let us assume that uh, 
uh, BIU fetches the first instruction. The first instruction is stored here and then it fetches second instruction. Second instruction is stored here followed by 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So while retrieving also first instruction will be retrieved first. Okay. Because this is first in first out. So first instruction will be executed first. Second instruction will be executed first. Third instruction will be executed next. Likewise. So first instruction, second instruction, third, four, five, six. Likewise, the instructions will be executed one by one. Now let us see about segmentation registers. So all these registers are called as segmentation registers. So let us see about segmentation by using with this diagram. So this diagram is not a part of the architecture. So simply for explaining segmentation concept, just I am taking the help of this diagram. Okay. So this is not the part of 8086 microprocessor. This is nothing but memory, main memory. Let main memory is divided into four parts, four segments. Here this starting address, this is nothing but code segment. And this segment is nothing but stack segment. This segment is nothing but data segment. And the last segment is nothing but extra segment. Okay. Code segment is nothing but it points to the starting address of the first segment. Stack segment points to the starting address of this, uh, this segment. Data segment points to the starting address of this segment. Extra segment points to the starting address of this segment. Okay. Core segment mainly contains the program which is executed. Whereas stack segment contains subroutines, functions. All the functions are nothing but subroutines. Subroutines are located in stack segment. And data segment and extra segment contains data on which we are performing the operation. Add A comma B. A and B contain some data. So this, those data will be stored in data segment and extra segment. Okay. Here we have the first register as CS. CS stands for code segment register. Here all the register size is 16 bits. All the register size is 16 bits. Why? Because why because 8086 microprocessor is a 16 bit microprocessor it performs operations on the 16 bit data so that's why the size of the each register is 16 bits so the first register is cs cs stands for core segment register the second register is ss ss stands for stack segment register third register is ds ds stands for data segment register fourth one is es es stands for extra segment register and the last one is IP. IP stands for instruction pointer. It specifies the offset. Okay. Uh, we will discuss uh, that here only. Uh, so here we have IP. IP means instruction pointer. Uh, let, let, let us first let us see about what is CS. CS register contains starting address of the core segment. Let the core segment address is 1000. That 1000 will be stored in CS. Next, stack segment register contains starting address of the SS segment. Let the stack segment address is 2000. That 2000 will be stored in SS register. We know that registers are useful for holding the data. Here we are storing the addresses. Data, DS stands for data segment register. It contains the address of starting address of this DS segment. Likewise, extra segment register contains starting address of ES. Here CS, SS, DS, ES are segments, whereas all these are registers. So these registers contains addresses of these segments. Okay. Next, here if you observe here, here these four are called as offset registers. These four are called as offset registers. Offset register means a particular location in that segment. So SP means stack pointer. So stack pointer points to the offset of stack segment so a particular location of the stack segment okay next one bp bp stands for base pointer base pointer also points to the address of some segment here next one is si si stands for source index source index points to the offset of the data segment destination index points to the offset of the extra segment extra segment uh, segment likewise we can we can also use bp as offset to extra segment and uh, data segment also okay 
So this is about uh, resistors and uh, uh, corresponding instruction pointer. Now let us see about adder. This is called as adder. Here we are using adder in order to calculate the physical address. So what is the physical address? The processor generated address is called as physical address. Okay. Whereas the address of hard disk is called as logical address. So now we have to find out the physical address. Okay. In order to calculate the physical address, here we need two things. The first address is segment address, whereas the second address is offset address. So the formula for the uh, physical address is physical address is equal to segment address into 10 plus offset. So what is the formula for physical address? Physical address is equal to segment address into 10 plus offset. Let us assume that here we are finding the physical address for the code segment. So code segment means this one. Let the address of the code segment is 1000. Let IP, what is IP? IP means instruction pointer. It points to the offset. Let it is 1000. Next instruction address is 1001. Next 1002, next 1003. Likewise, we have several instructions. Here let us assume that IP means 2345. Instruction pointer is 2345. We need to execute 2345 line. Okay. So how to calculate the physical address? Physical address is equal to segment address into 10. Here the segment is nothing but code segment. What is the address of the code segment? 1000. So 1000 H. 1000 H address. Address is specified with the help of H. So 1000 into 10 means 10,000. So 10,000 plus what is the offset here? 2345. So 10,000 plus 2345 means 12,345. So 12,345 is nothing but physical address. Here we in order to calculate the physical address, we are, we are using this adder. So we are using this adder for calculating the physical address. So this is about BIU, bus interface unit. So bus interface unit fetches an instruction from the memory and stores the corresponding instruction in the instruction queue. Now let us see about the duty of the, the functionalities of the EU execution unit. Execution unit retrieves an instruction from the instruction queue and then uh, with the help of the control system, it decodes the instruction. So execution unit first retrieves the instruction from the instruction queue. So first it retrieves the first instruction from the instruction queue. And what the control system will do, this is nothing but here this control system is nothing but the part of the execution unit. Execution unit. Control system decodes the instruction. Decoding means it determines what is the type of the instruction. Whether it has to perform add instruction or sub instruction or some logical instruction or shift instruction. It decodes the instruction. It determines the type of the instruction that is to be performed. Okay. Control system will do that thing. And then what the control system will do is with the help of the bus that information that uh, uh, that op code op code means operation that is to be performed let it be add operation so that information will be transmitted to the these resistors as well as arithmetic logic unit okay with the help of the bus th those things will be passed to resistors as well as alu now let us see about resistors here ah al bh bl chcl dhdl all these resistors are called as general purpose resistors. All these resistors are called as general purpose resistors. General purpose resistors. General purpose resistors are useful for temporary calculations. Here AH means, A means accumulator, B means base, C means count, various D means data. A stands for accumulator, B stands for base, C stands for count, various D stands for data. Here each register size is 16 bits. So the size of the AH is 8 bits. The size of the AL is 8 bits. So 8 plus 8 means 16 bits. The combination of AH and AL is called as AX. The size of the AX is 16 bits. Here the processor can perform operations on 8 bit data also. Okay. Next, the combination of BH and BL is called as BH, CH and CL is called as CH, DH and DL is called as DX. So AX, BX, CX, DX, these four are called as 
general purpose resistors. They are useful for some temporary calculations. Yard A comma B. Yard AH comma AL. So in order to do, in order to store that result, we use just the general purpose resistors. Okay. Here H stands for higher order. So higher order bits. Whereas L stands for lower order bit. So accumulator higher order bits. Next accumulator lower order bits. Next base resistor higher order bits. Base resistor lower order bits. Next to count register higher order bits. Next to count register lower order bits. Here BHBL capacity is 88, 88, 88. Okay. Here the accumulator, here the first register is called as accumulator. Accumulator is called as default register. Why? Because here in order to perform the operations, we are using arithmetic logic unit. In short, we can call it as ALU. ALU is the brain of the CPU. ALU performs any operation. It may be arithmetic operation or logical operation or shift operation, data transfer, manipulation, program control instructions. Likewise, plenty of instructions are there. Any instruction is executed in the CPU, in the processor with the help of ALU only. ALU performs the operation on two operands where the first operand is from accumulator only whereas the second operand is from some other register. So that's why this is called as default register. Why? Because accumulator performs operations mainly on two registers or three registers or four registers. But in those registers, one register must be from, one operand must be from accumulator register. Whereas the remaining things from, maybe from operands, maybe from the remaining registers. Okay. So that's why we can call accumulator as a default register. So what does ALU will do now? ALU will accept the data from the corresponding registers. Let the instruction is like this. Yad, yad, AH comma AL. Let the content of the AH is 123. Let the content of AL is 122. Okay. Now what the ALU will do? ALU will add the, uh, the content of AH and AL and the corresponding result will be stored in AH only. So what is the result of 123 plus 122? So 240, 245. So that is the result. Okay. So that result, uh, that result will be uh, stored in the bus and again the bus will, will pass us that information to the segmentation register. Segmentation register passes that order, that uh, that result to the adder. Adder will pass us the result to the memory. Memory. Okay. So what is the result here? 245. So execution unit executes the corresponding instruction. And after that, with the help of the bus, execution unit passes that information to the BIU bus interface unit. Bus interface unit will in turn passes that information to the memory so that information will be stored in the memory now here we have operands and flags uh, let us assume that uh, uh, some data is in the operand so processor can accept the data from the operand and it performs the corresponding operation okay so instead of accepting the data from al it may take data from the operand let the data is 10 so directly data will be taken from the operand operand field next here we have flags so sometimes uh, flags may be, flag bit may be affected. We have different types of flags are there. Carry flag, parity flag, overflow flag, interrupt enable flag. Likewise, several flags are there. We will discuss more about flags in the flags concept in the next video. So if, they, if there is any flag bit affected, so that flag bit will also be uh, passed to the bus. So from the bus, uh, it will be uh, transmitted to memory also. Okay. So this is about bus interface unit and execution unit. So bus interface unit mainly fetches the instruction whereas execution unit executes the instruction. After execution, it passes the result to the bus interface unit. Bus interface unit in turn stores that information in, information in memory. So why the architecture, why the microprocessor architecture is divided into two parts. So why we have two parts here. We are here we have divided the architecture into two parts in order to implement a concept called pipelining. Pipelining. 8085 microprocessor doesn't support pipelining. Whereas 8086 microprocessor supports pipelining. So what is pipelining? While execution unit is executing first instruction, 
while execution unit is executing first instruction then in the meantime bus interface unit bus interface unit fetches the second instruction it fetches the second instruction third instruction fourth instruction up to five instructions it will fetch up to six instructions it will fetch so here what is happening execution unit is executing the first instruction and in the meantime bus interface unit bus interface unit is not sitting idle it is fetching the remaining instructions from the memory so we can speed up the processing in less amount of time we can execute the instructions whereas if you take 8085 microprocessor in 8085 microprocessor what will happen is first instruction one will be fetched and then instruction one will be executed and after that after complete execution of the first instruction second instruction will be fetched second instruction will be executed after the complete execution of the second instruction then only third instruction will be fetched third instruction will be executed but here that problem is uh, doesn't arise here while the while the execution unit is executing the first instruction biu can fetches the remaining instructions from the memory so here the time is lost not wasted so in less amount of time the processor can execute more number of instructions so that is the reason why this architecture is divided into two parts in order to implement pipelining concept okay so here everything is explained so stack pointer we have base pointer source index destination index here all these are nothing but offset resistors okay here stack pointer base pointer instruction pointer these three are called as uh, pointer resistors pointer resistors whereas source index and destination index are called as index resistors we will discuss some more points on the resistors in the next concept that is uh, resistor organization so this is about architecture of 8086 microprocessor or block diagram of 8086 microprocessor So this is about architecture of 8086 microprocessor